Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to first understand the test API or the sample API that we are going to use in the first part of this tutorial series and then how we are going to send the first request, first get request, post request, put request and then delete request, the very common methods that are there available in the REST APIs, how we are going to perform all of those using this sample API that I'm going to take. So first thing is basically this is one of the API regress.in which will basically uh, which is available for free and there is a fake data already so you can just go ahead and use it for practicing. Now this is the first part of this series so I'm taking this dummy API as such but in the second part we'll work with some real APIs so you can know you can understand basically what all differences are how you are going to actually target your API test in the real projects right so dummy api's are absolutely fine to start with but then you have to put your or get your hands on into the real api's so that you get you gain more confidence okay so request.in and if you scroll down you will see that there are some of the the important methods that will basically cover so some of the get post put patch delete right so these are the key methods that are supported on this particular request.in api and you will see that if we, if I simply click on list user right so basically this is the endpoint so if you'll see I clicked on the list user this is the request this is the resource where this users lie and in the response if everything is successful you will see the list of users will be displayed right this is on the browser obviously so if now say for example I have to go ahead and test all of this into postman or send this list users request in postman get a single user in postman right that's how you are going to basically use the api or do the api testing wherein the ui is not ready but api is available so you can quickly go ahead use the postman tool or SOAPI tool and start testing the api so this is the url request.in now in the postman if say for example i will go ahead and hit the first request okay first get call so in order to create the first get call simply click on this plus sign here okay and it will open this untitled request and here you will see that different methods are available by default right so we have seen the get already but then we'll do we'll also explore about post put patch and delete these are the very common ones that you will use day in day out in api testing okay but then there are lot others which we'll discuss as and things arise in the course. Now here we have to enter the API endpoint, the URL, right? So request.in say for example, right? So simply put on the URL and now if say for example, I simply hit this endpoint. Okay, let me move this here. Okay, if I just say send in this particular case, then I'll simply see the status 200, okay, right? Which says that yes, this request has gone through successfully the time it took and the size or the response size and here you will see that it is basically returning the in the body if you'll see that this is the response this is simple html for the page that has been written returned right now in postman if i quickly go to the you know preview here you will see that it's not very good preview but the html that has been returned when we hit this particular endpoint it is well formatted not very well formatted as it is shown here but the same information that you see on the browser okay you will see be able to see similar sort of text and information here in the preview section of the postman as well okay so this is basically how the rest apis operate so in the browser itself you can go ahead and hit the request and get the response and because browsers are meant for rendering and for the ui so you will get the relevant information and postman is more for the api testing so you don't get that preview that great but this is just to show you that yes if you hit any of the endpoint here a get request it will go to the server and fetch the details that are available for that particular url and display or display the response here now the get request for what are what are different endpoints basically here so you'll see that you can list users right so if i click on this get right so this is the endpoint if i said simply copy this okay and api slash users right so basically request.in and then i have to if i simply click on this right you will see that here it automatically after request.in slash api slash users got appended right so this is the resource slash api slash users is the resource 
which if I remove this page two for now and let me hit enter, you will see all the users that are available. Okay, in this particular instance in WordPress API are listed here in the browser in the JSON format. Okay, so this is the endpoint that I can use to basically fetch all the users. So if I simply go ahead and put this endpoint here in the URL. Now this is the, the host name, right? And this is the resource. So anything after dot whatever dot com dot in, right? Is the resource. So here forward slash API slash users is the resource for what? Resource for the users, right? So if I simply go ahead and put a, or send a get request in this case, I should be able to get the same response. You will see the same response here. If I simply change it to the pretty format, Okay, you will see that all the users that are available there are being displayed here. Okay, so this is basically how we are going to start ahead with our testing. So this is the first get request. We have already seen the get request and the endpoint that will provide us the response for the users. Okay, now if I go back here, I'll talk about this page two later. Okay, this, this is the uh, query parameter basically so I'll talk about this later but to list the users it's basically simply slash API slash users and if you click on any of these it will automatically give you the endpoint which you have to use okay now say for example I have to create a new user right now get is to get the data from the server now to create something or to post something is post okay so to create you will see that it is a post request right i have to send a post call and what is the endpoints endpoint is same basically slash api or the resource is same slash api slash users but then i have to also send some payload there okay so this is sending your first post call so we have seen the get call so i can get the list of users i can get single user with this particular request okay so just after users if i say slash and then the id of the user right i should be able to get that particular user you'll see that this is the number two so let me show you here as well so say for example i just want this emma Wong. okay so simply here the request will remain same okay the endpoint will remain same single user i'll simply say forward slash and then the id of the user which is three i just want three to be displayed here okay to get only the user three so i'll simply say forward slash three and send the request and it should only get me the data for the user which has the id three this is how we are going to get single user and all the api or any api that you are going to test you will get documentation available with all the apis right there won't be an api that you will be allowed or that you will be asked to test without any of the documentation this documentation is nothing in terms of the documentation that you will get in your real project APIs. Your real project APIs will have very detailed Swagger documentation or, you know, very neat and clean documentation with all of the headers that will be required that are mandatory, the body parameters that are mandatory, all of that will be very, very clear. Okay. So th because this is just a dummy API, which we'll use to get our hands or just get started right this is baby steps towards learning api testing so that is why i'm just using this now in order to create a user we know that this is a create call right so create is a post so you'll see that it is a post it's not a get method it's a post method but in the post the endpoint is same the resource is same slash api slash user but then we have to also pass the payload what user we want to create right so you have to pass the payload as a json format right so this is the format that you have to basically specify for the user that you want to create the name and the job description so when we say json json stands for for javascript object notation and this is a data interchange format now if you are testing apis xml and json you will be breathing in and out right so this is very simple json starting with the curly braces and usually the data is in within the key value pairs okay and there can be you know array of data within the json so we'll, which we'll understand as we go along so let's quickly go ahead and create the first user or the user that we want to create so we'll simply go here now this is the get request let me create a post call okay so i'll click on this plus tab again and here from the drop down i'll simply say post okay and in order to create user the endpoint is api slash users right so i'll simply copy that okay the endpoint and i'll post paste it here in the url okay 
Now in the body, if you simply go here, now in the params, you don't need to specify anything. Here are some of the details that you will be learning about. So in the parameters, in the authorization, as we go along headers, you will see that at the moment, there are these are some of the headers that are added by default, right? So if I'll simply hide, you will see that no headers are added specifically. These are all auto generated headers that are added by Postman by default. Okay, so let me hide all of this. Now in the body, okay, if you see this documentation in the body, what we have to pass on to create, we have to pass on the this particular JSON, right? So this JSON we have to pass on and in the body, we'll simply go ahead and say here raw and we'll simply say JSON. Okay, so here in the drop down, you will see that we have different options for passing the different data. So we'll simply say select JSON and paste that JSON here. Okay, now in the name, I'll simply change it to say, for example, I want to create RCB Academy as the name and a job as a trainer. Okay, now this is the body that is required in order to send a post to create a user, right? If you're, you want to create a user, you need to provide the details for the user. And that's what we are providing here. Now, if you would have to do this from the UI, can you think what you would be doing? Now, to create a user, there will be a page available, the HTML page available, which you will open in the browser. And you will say, okay, name, you will type in this name on the UI. You will type in the job trainer in the trainer box. Okay, there will be two text boxes, most probably, that will be provided on the browser. And then you will say submit. And then on submit, the same endpoint will be called from the browser. And this data will, over the network, will be convert into JSON format and pass through this API, this endpoint and the response will be returned on the browser and you'll, it will be displayed as success. So in the background, after the browser, it's just a presentation layer. The browser layer is presentation layer. After that, it's all this, whatever we are doing in the postman, right? So here, if I simply go ahead and send it, you will see the response. It will show you that it has been created, right? So you will see the response pretty formatted here. RCV Academy trainer and IDs 223 has been created and the time and date stamp as well. Okay. Now, if I want to see that whether this user is successfully created, right? This is the response that yes, once this response has been received from the server, that means server has processed this request successfully. 201 created the time it took and the size of this whole response okay so this is basically about the post call using this dummy api right now not necessarily that everything will work perfectly because this is just a dummy api okay that we are taking but when we move to the real api this is just for you to go ahead and quickly brush up the get call post call and see the responses that everything is working fine for you and then we'll proceed further okay so we'll again in the next tutorial we'll understand about some more methods so what we have understood is the get and post we'll understand about the put patch and delete in the next tutorial and the difference bet between put and patch as well and then we'll proceed further with our postman tutorial okay so that's all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching